Becky and Lynn. Good morning. Uh, we have some visitors today, so we're very happy to have Jerry's son and daughter-in-law with us, so please greet them. We're pleased to have Diane back with us, and of course, it's always fun to have Thorne, who might preach for me. <laughs> uh, other announcements that we have, Kyle Walls' birthday is today, so happy birthday to Kyle. And uh, Jim Hinch's birthday is next Saturday, so happy birthday to Jim if you see him. Uh, session meets today after church. Lifeline is with us on the 11th. The quilters will be here on the 12th. Pet Blessing is on the 23rd, and we have Vacation Bible School coming up mid-July, the 16th through the 18th, uh, and there are brochures still on the table. I see we're down to one directory on the table, so if you would like one, uh, let us know in the office and we can get a few more printed up. Um, are there other announcements? Okay, the men's get together. If there are no other announcements, uh, please rise if you are able and let's turn our hearts and minds to worship. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. On the day I called, you answered me and increased the strength of my soul. Let us worship God. Let us pray. We awake our souls to the thrill of your splendor. We lift up our praises to you, God. We rest secure in your love for us. We thank you always for second chances and for our lives and for this congregation. Help us always to be the people you would have us be. Amen. Opening hymn this morning is number 370, This Is My Father's World.
may be seated. Good morning. Trusting in the promise of grace, let us pour out our hearts before God. Let us pray in unison. You called us to life in the spirit, yet we seek to satisfy the flesh. We call you gracious, yet we practice greed. We praise you with our lips, O God, yet we do not honor you in our lives. Discontent consumes us as we yearn for still more things. We know that to live by your grace promises inheritance of new life. Redeem our enslavement to corruptible desires that we may be worthy to be called Christ's children. Paul declares that if the Spirit of God dwells in us, the one who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to our mortal bodies through the Spirit. For all who are led by the Spirit are children of God. Believe this word of promise and walk in newness of life. Lord, as we listen to your holy word, open our hearts to the power of the Spirit. Call us out of darkness and lead us into your marvelous light. Amen. Our first scripture reading once again this week is from 1 Samuel. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I shall name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and went to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came out to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come to me. Come with me to the sacrifice. Then he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When he came, they all came, he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But he rejected him, for the Lord said, Do not look on the appearance or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see mortals as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass by before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he says, There remains the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Our second scripture reading is 2 Corinthians 5. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. May God add his blessing to this reading of his word. Now grow and greet one another with the peace of Christ.
The prayer hymn this morning is number 771, What is the World Like? We have a number of people we want to continue to keep in our prayers. Uh, Donnie and Sue, of course, Jim and Becky. Uh, we're grateful to see Bob here today, but we always want to keep him in our prayers. Uh, Barbara, uh, we're hoping that her device finally gets uh, fixed to the point where it works really well for her. And we want to keep uh, Ruth in our prayers. Uh, she does not know as yet when her surgery will be. Are there other joys or concerns this morning? We heard fishing wasn't real great, but breakfast was fun. <laughs> You're supposed to be fishers of people. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, you have created us and this world. We often cause divisions and allow our human ways to get in the way of being your disciples. Bring us back to your fold, we pray. Help us to build bridges and not cause separations among people and the church. Still our fears and anxiety, give us the strength to continue forward as your ambassadors. Help us to be ministers of reconciliation and peace. We are a covenant community we have a common purpose given us by God. In this community, we are related to one another as organs of the body. All are important parts of making the whole work well. We have lifted up to you names. There may be others unspoken. And we lift up to you now the prayer that you taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Gospel lesson this morning is from Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. Then he went home, and the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for the people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemes they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, is my brother and sister and mother. Thus ends the reading of his holy word. From the beginning of his ministry, as told by Mark, Jesus has been dealing with divided houses and kingdoms. He casts out demons and heals the sick and causes a paralytic to walk. They were all houses and kingdoms divided. They lived with inner conflict. They were all separated from their families and communities, all that would give them security and identity. Their outer conditions of illness, paralysis, and demons point to the inner conflict, the battle between health and disease not just physically, but also spiritually. The battle and interior conflict have been around since Adam and Eve separated themselves from God in the garden. This division and inner conflict are reality in today's world. A marriage divided ends in divorce. A nation divided ends in politics and possibly civil war. An economy divided yields poverty and injustice. A community divided becomes prejudice and violent. A faith divided becomes sinful. We all know what it's like to live a divided life, acting one way with some people and a different way with others. We are one person at work and a different person at home. Behavior, beliefs, and ethics become situational. There was work life, family life, prayer life, personal life, and social life. Life becomes a bunch of pieces. It seems that we are forever trying to put the pieces back together, which brings us to the crowd that has formed around Jesus in this morning's scripture. Jesus stands before us as the image of unity, 
wholeness, and integration. He does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Jesus offers a different image of what life might look like if we let him in. Because this hints at change, the people say Jesus has gone out of his mind. It's hard to think about such a drastic change in our lives, but the beginning of feeling whole in Jesus is to admit our brokenness, inner conflict, and divisions. What divides us? Anger, resentment, greed, insecurity, sorrow, loss, fear, envy, guilt, and loneliness. But Jesus is stronger than anything that fragments our lives. There's nothing about our lives that can't be put back together by Christ's love. This seems to be a point in today's scripture, but there's another point, I think, which carries importance too. In Mark 3, 35, Jesus asks, who are my mother and brothers? When the crowd decided that Jesus was going insane, the group sent word to his family to come at once, and they came to take Jesus home. This is when Jesus poses the question asking, who are my mother and brothers? Paul Tillich points out in one of his writings the fact that Jesus doesn't say those outside are not my mother and brothers. He doesn't deny relationship to his biological family. He expands the family circle to include others. Jesus points to a spiritual rather than a physical kinship as the basis for life in the kingdom of God. The spirit unites us as family in a bond of love that withstands all storms and divisions in life. We're taught early on with the fifth commandment to honor our fathers and mothers, but there is a difference between honoring them and giving them ultimate authority over our lives. God's authority will always outweigh parental authority. Our parents are human. God is not. This isn't easy for child or parent. A child may not marry the right person or enter into the right line of work or even join the right church. A parent's taught that their job is to provide for their children and protect them from danger, to nurture them in their development, to encourage and support them as they grow. But when does a parent let go? At some point, we have to entrust our children to God. The goal of healthy parenting is to enable our children to become the men and women God intended them to be, created not in our image, but in God's. Jesus' relationship with his family moved to a new level. So today, may we stop and recognize the love and gift of our parents and become united in God's love as brothers and sisters in Christ. Please rise if you are able and join in the first verse of hymn 306, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Freely we have received, freely let us give. Let us receive the morning offering.
God, you have called us to a life united in service. You fill us with the Spirit. We ask that you accept our gifts and make their use effective as we carry on your ministry. Amen. Closing hymn this morning is number 700, I'm going to live so God can use me. back up one second. I apologize to Lynn. She's had quite a week and we do need to keep Lynn as well in our prayers. Uh, she has potentially a pulled muscle. Uh, maybe not, but we did rule out blood clot this week. So thanks be to God for that. Thank her. <laughs> <laughs> the body as a whole is stronger than any of its parts. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.